What's going on everyone? This is Raheel. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be looking at five Python functions for competitive programming. Let's get straight into the video. So the general gist of this is avoiding iteration for simpler coding. So a lot of these functions are going to be avoiding for loops or while loops, and they're going to be simplifying it either in efficiency or code simplicity. So let's look at the first one, or the fifth one, I should say, separating parameters. This one is the zip function. So you're given a set of parameters that are associated through key value pairs in a dictionary, as a lot of you know. Separating those pairs becomes efficient with the zip function. So you don't have to iterate over all of them and keep adding them to a list. It's very simple. All you have to do is compress it, otherwise known as the zip function, and then convert it right back into a list. We have people wait. Bob, Marla, and Joey. Essentially what we're gonna do is to this dictionary is we're gonna convert it into a list of tuples and we are going to sort it by the keys and the values. So each tuple is gonna have that key and value for that specific pair. We convert, have to convert that back into a list because at that point it's still a zip object and then we reassign to people wait. So when we print out people wait, this is what should appear. Essentially we have Bob, equals 72, Marla equals 59, Joey's 84, and these are just now tuples instead of dictionaries. But in terms of accessing it, it becomes maybe a little simpler and maybe a little easier to understand without adding too many lines of code. The fourth one is iterative applications. This one's gonna be the map function. The map function is for mutating a list of values without iterating. And essentially what we did for zip was just reorganize them for map. We're actually gonna apply a function on them or mutate them ideally. So for example, we have these stocks and these all represent numbered values. And essentially we just wanna convert it into actual prices. So we can make this convert function. It is just a one line function, but all I've done is just um, compress it into a Lambda function because it's only one line. I mean, we're actually going to take this stocks and take every element in that list, apply this function to it. So it's gonna be the return value. I do explain this in a little bit more depth in my actual map video. So feel free to check those out if you are a little confused of what map does here. But that's essentially all it's going to be doing. It does return a map object, so like for zip, we have to convert it into a list. And then we print that, you can see that it is now converted these values, 10, 11, 52, and 79 to strings for actual prices. Number three is gonna be concatenation. And that is just gonna be the join function. The join function is a pretty common function for joining elements in a list together. And usually we have to use a for loop or, well, actually it's mostly gonna be a for loop for every item in a list, append that to a new list and then delete the old list. With this one, you don't actually have to create a new list. All you have to do is act on the existing one. So what we could see here is we have these inputs from the user, one plus one equals two. I mean, ideally these would be inputs from a user because this doesn't seem like a good place to put an equation. And essentially we want to separate these key values with a space. So we can do that by just putting a join together. So space or the separator between the characters dot join. And then we want to actually supply the inputs or the list. So now it's going to print out the list separated with spaces. That's pretty nice. Number two is finding the most common numbers. This one you need to keep track of the most common number. And usually we need to keep track of lots of numbers at the same time, assign them to a little bit more variables. But all I'm saying is that we can actually simplify this a lot more by using the counter function. So we're essentially just gonna take this list of numbers, which is like one, three, four, and everything like that, and put it into a counter class. The counter class has a most common function. So we're able to use these uh, list values and actually extract the most common value within the list. The great thing about this is that you don't need to grab the most common value, you can actually grab uh, two of the most common values or three of the most common values or whatever. There's two most common values that I wanna look at. The output here it says one is the most common value as it shows up three times. And you see one, one, and then one. Four is the second most common value as it also shows up three times, one, two, and three, right there. So you could see that it has actually rounded up for us and it makes it a little less complex because we only had at least like three lines of code. And that was very simple. Last one, or the first one, is I think is gonna be the most useful feature for my competitive programming. It's gonna be batching together the largest and smallest numbers. If we have these foot sizes right here, we have a list of feet sizes, 10, 2, 12, right? These are all foot sizes, American or whatever. 
and we want to find the largest feet there. So this is essentially going to be very similar to our most common one, except instead we want to actually target the largest number instead of the amount a number that appears the most amount of times. So I want the three most largest feet. And then I also want the three most smallest feet. You can see it prints it here, three largest feet, 12, 11, and 10, which are descending. And then the three smallest feet is two, three, and five. So it is a very useful presentation of information and allows us to narrow down our list without actually mutating it anyway. And that is actually all. So this, like I said, this article is inspired from the Geeks for Geeks article of Python uh, competitive coding tricks. I don't think these are tricks at all. I just think that these are really useful functions that can really reduce the amount of code you have to write and increase the amount of time uh, that you actually have coding other things. So if you did like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Of course, kind of, if you do choose to comment, be sure to comment any other functions that I may have missed. These are just five functions that I saw that really stood out. But hopefully these future videos can come out on the regular schedule, which is every Monday. So be sure if you're subscribed to stay tuned every Monday. And that's all for me. Have a great rest of your day.